Hello student, in this video we are going to study regarding the plant tissue culture. So before start with the plant tissue culture, you have to know certain terms regarding this plant tissue culture. Like what is mean by culture? So, so the culture means growing. Hence, tissue culture, a single cell, tissue or a specific organ of a plant, these are used for culturing that means for growing purpose where the growth is carried out in vitro under aseptical conditions so here aseptic conditions are maintained because the nutrient media is provided for the growth of that plant cell or a plant tissue and as the nutrient media is very prone to the microbial contamination therefore the aseptic conditions are need to be maintained during the plant tissue culture technique. While the second term that is what is mean by explant. So explant it is nothing but the particular or a specific part of the plant which is used for the culturing technique. Where uh, we can use either a single cell, a tissue, a specific organ of the plant. Not only that. A protoplasts are also used for the culturing. Protoplast means the cell of which cell wall is removed and that is also used for the culturing technique. Okay, so that is known as the explant and this explant is used for the regeneration of a new plant by using this plant tissue culture technique. Where what is mean by artificial conditions? So while growing this explant in the plant tissue uh, culture, the, some artificial conditions these are required to be maintained as it is grown in vitro. So, what are kind of artificial conditions? That is nothing but the temperature, humidity, light intensity or the air. So, such conditions should be under controlled environment. So, that should be maintained as per the requirement of that particular plant which is needed for its proper growth and multiplication. So according to this, this artificial condition should be maintained properly. Why? Why there is need to carry out such kind of a plant tissue culture techniques? So uh, this plant tissue culture technique, it is responsible for improving the quality of the plant, also for increasing the yield of the plant and for developing a desirable characteristics in the plant by applying this tissue culture technique. Not only that, it is also responsible for obtaining the primary and the secondary metabolites for, from the plant. Okay, so for all these purpose that is for improving the quality, for developing desirable characteristics, for getting more yield as well as to get the primary as well as the secondary metabolites these plant tissue culture techniques are commonly carried out. Hence, we can define the plant tissue culture as it is nothing but the in vitro cultivation of a plant cell or a tissue aseptically under controlled environmental condition in liquid or a semi-solid well-defined nutrient media. So here, a particular nutrient media is used for the growth and development of the plant cell or a tissues under aseptically controlled environmental conditions where this technique is generally followed for the regeneration of new plant not only that but here also for the production of a primary as well as the secondary metabolites okay so this technique is generally followed for regeneration of a new plants as well as production of primary and secondary metabolites. So, there are two basic principles on which this plant tissue culture technique is based. So, first one that is nothing but the TOTI potency where the TOTI means total and potency. So, obviously in case of a plant, the potency is nothing but ability to grow. So, TOTI potency means ability of a cell to regenerate into a new whole plant. So that is nothing but the TOTI potency. So whatever the cell or the tissue which is selected as an explant for the plant tissue culture technique that must possess this TOTI potency property. Why? 
द अनदर प्रॉपर्टी इज नथिंग बट द प्लास्टिसिटी प्लास्टिसिटी मीन्स एबिलिटी टू इनिश सेल डिविजन फ्रॉम ऑलमोस्ट एनी टिश्यू ऑफ अ प्लांट और इट इज एडेप्टेबिलिटी ऑफ अ प्लांट एडेप्टेबिलिटी मीन्स मीन्स द प्लांट सेल विल एडेप्ट डिफरेंट एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशन बाय चेंजिंग इट्स मेटाबोलिक पाथवे ड्यू टू दिस प्रॉपर्टी द प्लांट सेल्स और टिश्यूज विल ग्रो इन आर्टिफिशियल एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशन एंड इट विल डेवलप इन टू अ न्यू प्लांट now we will start with the steps involved in the plant tissue culture so we know that for plant tissue culture we need an explant this explant is grown under controlled environmental conditions where this explant is obtained from the plant that means explant is originate from the wide range of a plant tissues like leaf stem root petiole embryo or meristem so explant is obtained from the plant which may be either uh, any part of a plant tissue or a cell and that explant is taken for the regeneration of new plantlets so here this explant is need to be surface sterilized so here the surface sterilization of the explant is carried out by means of chromic acid calcium hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite 70% alcohol or mercury chloride where these are used because these sterilizing agents do not harm the explant maintain its totipotency so these explants are cut into the smaller pieces and then it is used for the sterilization where after surface sterilization the inoculation of the explant is carried out where inoculation is nothing but this contains a nutrient media where the surface sterilized explant is transferred into this nutrient media where this nutrient media it contains different minerals or different nutrients such as macronutrients and micronutrients and in this nutrient media the explant will start growing where a particular or specific duration is given for the incubation so after incubation that is at particular temperature this incubation is carried out for a particular time duration and after that incubation there will occur induction of a callus so callus is is nothing but the mass of the cells so this mass of the cells will form because uh, as the nutrient media is provided so because of this this explant will start growing by taking the nutrients and it forms an a mass Uh, which is nothing but the soft mass is formed and that is known as the callus so this callus is then further transferred into the another nutrient media where there occur regeneration of a shoots and the roots so according to this nutrient media will provide the different nutrients which are responsible for uh, formation of the shoots and the roots in that callus so uh, here particular the differentiation of the cells will occur and the organogenesis will take place so according to this organogenesis the shoot center root formation will occur in this nutrient media and this step is known as the reculturing because here the new nutrient media is used for the uh, growth of this uh, callus then whatever the plantlets these are regenerated these are not taken directly into the natural environment as these are very delicate and therefore they need to be habituated to the natural environment so for this purpose these plantlets these are kept into the artificial environment in which the soil is provided for their growth where this soil will contain the minerals and some nutrients which is needed for their growth and in that soil and that artificial environment these plantlets are allowed to grow properly and this step is known as the hardening of the plantlets where now these plantlets will become sufficiently strong so that they can face the environmental conditions and can grow easily in the external environmental conditions so after this step these plantlets are then transferred into the open field or in the greenhouses and these are allowed to grow there where this is nothing but the overall steps which are involved in the plant tissue culture but 
in case if the cell is used as an explant and the nutrient media which is provided if it is a liquid suspension culture then uh, in that case again these cells will uh, grow in this suspension culture and it will form a callus and this callus is then further divided and it is added into the bioreactor where this bioreactor again contains the sufficient nutrient media which is needed for the growth and these are used for the production of the secondary metabolite so this is regarding the different steps which are involved in the plant tissue culture technique so in this video we have seen regarding what is meant by plant tissue culture what are the conditions required for the plant tissue culture technique then what is the principle behind this tissue culture techniques and what are the steps involved in this plant tissue culture technique so this is regarding the plant tissue culture technique in the next video we will study regarding the applications and the requirements of the plant tissue culture technique so please like and share this video if you are new to my channel subscribe this channel to get more videos regarding this pharmacopoeia subject thank you